Good morning. I thought I'd show you a wee demonstration of the modified Bush TV22 that is fitted with a TV, Sony TV 990 uh, UB-CRT. Now this set has been subject to a lot of modification over the last few months. Uh, we have a Thorn Jellypot line out per transformer. Uh, we have a homemade EHT unit. It's basically just an EHT rectifier but with stabilising diodes and smoothing capacitors. You'll also see there's an extra diode slung on the bottom. Uh, that's to bring the EHT a up a little bit more for this tube. Um, previous tube, in fact, was a radar tube that was fitted to the set. The set has a capacitor heater dropper, uh, but it still retains um, the, line, the standard line out. But with, of course, sorry, when I say standard line out, it still has valves. Um, instead of a PL30, it's a PL36. It has a PY81. And instead of the PZ30, it has a PY33. Now, the HT to the line stage is dropped via this resistor. Um, to be fair, uh, this is really running on starvation mode, this line stage, simply because it doesn't require the full power that the previous one did. So it's very, very efficient indeed. Um, as you can see, that's the test card on the Sony tube. Uh, lovely picture, very, very good indeed. Um, it's very bright. You I mean the, the light in the shed today is, is, is high. There's a lot of light in here and it gives a really, really nice picture. Um, I'll just put on some program material. Now, what we may find is at this point, when I do put some program on, there's no signal, which I was expecting. It's because the aerial amplifier is off. Let's just turn the aerial amplifier on. That's the aerial amp on and we should get a picture up now. There we are. So as you can see, this is uh, that's RTE1 actually, uh, which I can receive here um, in Kilmarnock. Um, now it's, it's it's actually set for 16 by 9, so you can see it's rather tall and skinny. <laughs> um, I'm using a little anti-ference um, freeview box up there on the top for this particular channel. Um, but uh, it's, it's, you mean the whole thing works very well. Um, I've a lot to do. I mean, I've got to try and get the mountings better. It's just held on with a, uh, a melted uh, long cable tie <laughs> just through the brackets. Uh, and you'll see there's a little stylus box sitting underneath the, the neck of the tube to just stabilize it. Um, the aqueduct's not particularly good in this tube, so I'm going to have to do something about that before I finish it off. And it's just taped down with a bit of wire, but yeah, you know, down to ground. Um, in the meantime so as I say we will need to tidy that up that's basically because the, the set that this came out of had been lying in the damp for a long time but as you can see um, the scan coils are the Sony ones and they go directly into the frame and on the line they're on the two tags for, for 405, 625 so that gives you a very very low impedance so it's ideal for these coils but anyway that's that's basically the, the the set, um, what we've done. Um, I've actually put it into the cabinet. You do see these kind of edges round about it on the mask. Um, but as I say, this is just an experiment. Um, and it's, it's an experiment that has worked very well. I'll uh, just show you, you know, this height. It goes way up. You know, there's plenty of height on it. And it stays very linear. So the matching actually must be very good between the uh, um, original bush frame output transformer on these coils and once again I'll put it back on the test card the height is down now a wee bit of course um, pull that lead out there we are uh, slightly wider on the left but I think we can sort that out as well I don't think that's a huge problem I might even think about making up a, uh, a width sleeve for it so there we go I just thought I'd let you see it okay thank you